The UK is a weird country. We have bad food, bad weather, a superiority complex over the rest of Europe, and we use Imperial and metric units at the same time. No really, we buy petrol and diesel by the litre, but when we're driving around we're consuming it at a rate of X miles per gallon while driving at 30 miles an hour around town. And when I went to Canada a couple of years ago I was reading fuel consumption in litres per 100km and that took some getting used to, because since I was 17 I'd been trying to keep the number as high as possible for miles per gallon and in Canada I had to get used to getting that number as low as possible. It's a game I like to play, set a new high score and stuff like that. My current record is 99.9 .9 in a Hyundai Hybrid, and that's as high as the trip computer would go. Elsewhere, in a pub, you'd ask for a pint, but if you buy it at the supermarket, it's sold in 550ml cans. It's actually law here that when you're selling goods, you can sell in Imperial and Metric, but Metric must take precedence, so on the market stalls it will have to say £1.20 per kilo in larger letters than whatever that cost is for a pound of goods. That's LB pounds rather than currency pounds. Did I mention we're weird? You'll probably never hear a British person tell you their weight in kilos, but more in stone. And the last time I weighed myself I was 14 stone or 200 pounds, give or take, which is 90.7 kilos. Yeah, I'm a chonk boy. But nothing is weirder about us than the fact that we drive on the left hand side of the road, and our island colonies tend to as well. That includes Australia, New Zealand, Bermuda, the Falkland Islands, Seychelles, and our old colonies in the Caribbean. But why do we do it? As with a lot of stuff to do with Britain, there's a history behind it, and it starts, as it often does, with the Romans. Archaeologists have discovered evidence to suggest that the Romans drove their carts and their wagons on the left-hand side of the road, and in 1998, archaeologists found a track leading to a Roman quarry near Swindon, and the grooves in the left-hand side of the road going away from the quarry were deeper than the ones on the right. So since carts would exit the quarry heavy and arrive lighter, they surmised... Romans drive on the left. And apparently the Romans marched on the left hand side of the road as well, and also carried their swords in their sheaths, the Latin term for which being vagina, lol, and on the right hand side they didn't have to move their shield from in front of their bodies. But that was just a guy on the internet saying I read somewhere that so it's probably not true. But across history and into the modern age it's evident that the English, whether that's because of the invasion based nature of our colonisation over the years through the Romans, the Vikings, the Saxons and the Normans, Love a good scrap, as you may have seen at the Euros this year. Coming up to anybody coming the opposite way on a road, you would never know if they were going to be friendly to you or try to rob you, or just demand satisfaction in a duel, and given that most humans tend to be right-handed, passing traffic with the traffic to your right means that you can draw your sword, have it in your hand, and then attack with your dominant hand without being inconvenienced. And obviously this works both ways, you can both fight unless you get lucky and the bloke coming the other way happens to be a southpaw, such as myself. Fast forward to medieval times and the spiral staircases went upwards to the right and therefore down to the left, so those defending could shank their attackers around a corner without getting hit themselves. But there's also a logic to driving on the left from a biological point of view. Most cars in the UK have manual gearboxes, although autos are getting more and more common now, and changing gear with the less dominant left hand means that your more dominant hand is still on the steering wheel and you're therefore, in theory, able to keep the vehicle under more control driving with just one hand. More humans are right eye dominant as well, and in left side driving countries like Australia, the UK and Japan, road collisions are less than they are in right hand drive countries. Then in the late 1700s, large wagons became the norm for transporting goods, and more horses were required to pull the heavy wagons. So in order to drive these wagons, the driver sat on the horse on the back left, and his whip hand was then in his right hand free to do its thing. But the problem was, driving on the left meant that it was difficult to judge traffic coming the opposite way. So they started driving on the right hand side of the road, so they were therefore like on the left, in the middle, so they could see better. As such, Pennsylvania passed a law to keep right in 1792, with more US states and Canada following soon afterwards. Meanwhile in Europe, Napoleon enforced a keep right law that same year, and enforced that rule in France at any conquered territories that he conquered. Simon Whistler moment, bonus fact. Hitler did exactly the same thing as it so happens, he forced Czechoslovakia and Austria to swap sides, and when the Nazis invaded the Channel Islands, they ordered everybody to swap sides there as well. 
Napoleon was indeed left-handed, so for him it made sense to march on the right so he could swing with his left hand, even if for his army it would be uncomfortable if most of them are right-handed, but it would mean it would be easy to fight the British, who would also have to swing across the hit so that they were sort of both inconvenienced, as it were, but the French would have actually trained for left-handed fighting. Although I'm not sure how Napoleon's plan would work, because if you're meeting the enemy on a road, you'd effectively have to charge into them head-on, but... I'm a sim racer, not a general. But while these larger wagons, just to go back to that, were coming across the US and Canada, in Britain we didn't need them as we we're a much smaller country, so the wagon driver still sat on the right hand side and stayed left so that they could see better up the road, as well as predominantly right handed populace means that swinging with a sword or shooting a flintlock pistol was a lot easier. Then in 1835, traffic congestion in London led to a law being passed to make all traffic crossing London Bridge, which isn't Tower Bridge by the way, kept left so that they could smooth out the traffic flow. And not long after that, it was incorporated into the Highways Act, and then that was made law throughout the British Empire, so all of the colonies in the British Empire had to drive on the left as well. But to bring motorsport into the equation here, historically cars used at Le Mans had the steering wheel in the British configuration. Even in cars such as the Ford GT, which was an American car, and the Ferrari 330 being obviously an Italian car. But this is more down to the pits at Le Mans being on the right hand side of the track, and getting out of the car on the right hand side closest to the garage in those days was deemed to be safer than getting out on the left and being potentially run over because up until a point, the pits at Le Mans weren't separated by pit wall like they are today. And some prototypes still keep right-hand drive, but more as a tradition thing rather than a practicality and safety one. Today, there's still about 60 or so countries that drive on the left. Most island nations do drive on the left, but some island nations drive on the right. And even some mainland countries such as India, Pakistan, Suriname and Guyana are also left-hand traffic. Right-hand traffic is more common, and here in the UK we did consider swapping a few times, but it just wouldn't be us, would it? So a quick history and reasons as to why we are total weirdos and drive on the other side of the road. It's something different for the channel but I hope it was interesting for you and if you did find it interesting and if you did learn something, like the video and for more stuff like this or stuff mostly to do with motorsport, just get that subscribe button clicked and get that bell on so you never miss out on one of my future videos. Big thanks to the people of Patreon who continue to support this channel and if you wish to join them or join in the chilled out Discord chat, then all the links you need will be in the description box for you. So until next time, I've been Aidan Mord, have a great day wherever you are and I'll see you all again soon for another video. So until then, goodbye. <laughs>